to the first point of your presentation where um, you, you indicate that, indicated that only the, the, the creatives industry sector is the fastest growing, it's one. one of the fastest growing sectors um, during the, in the crisis, in the global economic crisis. And when we go back when I made that, that connection of foresight in, and the growth of the sector, then I, it takes me to a place about um, satisfying the needs of people. The whole idea of development is to create happiness or welfare for people. And I like to kind of build philosophies in terms of understanding things. And when I the what, what the global economic crisis has done is to reduce for people's ability to purchase material things. For people would normally derive satisfaction from the purchase of physical things, but in the context of limited income, they still strive for this happiness. And one of the easy, cheapest ways to get the same level of satisfaction and happiness is through the um, applications, uh, apps, the creative industry, whatever it is. So they're no longer purchasing physical things, they're buying more service-based products and innovation products in order to um, replace or, or to account for this um, thing. So when you talk about foresighting, I'm trying to make a connection. If it is that we're foresighting to see what persons will be needing over the period of time, over the next few years, until when the global economy um, picks up pace, then it is imperative that we look at things that are not so material-based in terms of actual things. So hence the importance of the creative industry. All right, well, I pitched a little different, which is that uh, you see this slide here? I wrote this slide about 12 years ago. It didn't have apps in it back then. We put in apps last night. All right? But everything else I put in there, you know, in this slide, I wrote 12 years ago. Um, and already there was clear indications that um, things like the estatization of production and consumption are becoming more and more important. So for example, in the automotive industries, 
um, the companies that spend more on design were the ones that were winning more and more markets. So Japanese firms were spending, were all spending the, the American and even European counterparts in terms of design. It was quite interesting that the design for Japanese cars was being done in Los Angeles by America. Uh, so, you don't have to be doing it yourself. You can hire other people to do it on your behalf. The other thing is that, um, as people achieve more and more of their material needs, if um, you use Maslow's hierarchy of needs, <laughs> um, these other desires and wants uh, take over. And so the increase in what we call in the sort of industrial context, identity formation and becomes more and more important. And so that's what is driving a lot of consumption and so forth. So it's not like well, when the global economic crisis is over, we will be move back to something else. You know, that's not the case. The global economy has shifted in this direction. So an increasing share of people's daily consumption so if you look at the basket of goods and services and whatever that people consume, it's moving increasingly away from, as you put it, material things, the digitized things, as the things become more and more digitized. All right? Uh, so it's, for example, people are moving away from watching television to using the app and um, playing games and so on and so on. Even in the realm of the creative industries, there's migration between one subsector to another. So you can't just say we're getting into the creative industries. We have to ask, well, what come from the creative industries? And then if you say, well, getting into audiovisual, you have to say, well, what element of audiovisual? You have to be super precise. Right? And that level of precision is not something that we have yet begun to do well. Uh, so we still think in, in general, if you want to get into audiovisual, well, animation is growing, uh, maybe short films. Films for mobile devices, um, yeah, we really, really targeted uh, in this process. Um, just keeping with it what we've learned over the past few days um, in terms of innovative systems. And I am, I'm really glad that you're here as a Caribbean researcher and you know, you're presenting in a specific sector. But I would like to, you, the, the slide you just had up, the statement you made is that you wrote this list 12 years ago. I would like you to speak to, um, as, an, as a researcher, and the discussions that we've had about connecting the academic with businesses and providing the knowledge that they need to propel them forward. Um, what has been your experiences in terms of development of linkages within the region and locally? Yeah. I was sharing so with, over lunch with some of my colleagues and friends in fact. Nirad refers to him as his boss. So Nirad's boss, who is the chairman of CSI, we were having lunch. And I don't know if it's true that can look him up. And I said to them after several comments that you know I wrote a business plan for the Trump and they for National Carnival Commission in Trinidad in nineteen ninety. Only this year that it implemented any component of that business. That is how many years later? 15 years later? <laughs> I wrote a strategic plan for Curry Festa, which is happening in August this year, which nobody knows about. Uh, I wrote a business plan for that 10 years, plan 10 years ago. They're still to implement really any of it. I can go over this. I've written business plans, strategic plans. So, getting down to the nitty gritty of, of helping firms, helping sectors, helping governments, whatever. We are allergic to change. <laughs> and we have a virus. Where everybody is covering their rare 
And what, I, what do I mean by that? I'm being facetious, I'm being provoked. But let me be precise. And be scholarly about it. If you have organizations where the management and leadership style does not allow for the engagement of ideas, which is the case for most of our institutions, what you have is a framework where only when the boss says something that it's a good idea. If the boss doesn't say it, then everybody else is in an upholding position. People who come up with ideas eventually have to leave those organizations because they are considered troublemakers. And that's because they are making trouble. <laughs> Alright? And so they move on. And then they move out. I've, I've worked in many organizations. Sector organizations, state owned enterprises, private companies, the list. And uh, we still have a management culture that is related to the plantation. And we still feed people um, like if we are operating on our plantation. Alright, so that's why I'm really, um, I make the point that I'm, until we change our management culture, and our leadership culture became a leadership potential in our societies and our food and our sector will always be sub optimal. Now, the world is not waiting on us, unfortunately. And so when you see our share of global value added dropping at such a rapid rate, um, we are being forced to, to think in, in new ways. So I heard uh, Minister Dukran Minister Finance Trust Vehicle. Which is becoming more and more. Part of this, sorry. Um, he made a really interesting point. He says we need to be looking at the political economy of innovation in our society. And I was like, oh, okay. And he says, and it's a term that I've heard in the last few years only from some senior people. He says, yes, what we have is an anti growth coalition. <laughs> then he went on to say that the banks operating in the Caribbean have financial assets that are five times the GDP of the whole crew, all the Caribbean economies put together. I was like, wow. I'd never heard anyone believe that statistics. I wanted to go and ask the state again. Oh! It means that. The problem is not money. The problem is that our banks and other financial institutions don't see any potential in, uh, for investment opportunities that can create a return on, on investment. It must be that. No, I know there's more for that. Yeah, because the majority of banks that come into the region, I, I mean, when we what leverage? You see, we talked about investors coming into the region, but I mean, how are we in the region negotiating with all of these commercial banks and what they offer persons within the region? Because you can always get a car, you can always get a mortgage, all right? Uh, but if you want to set up a business, you're in trouble. But what I'm saying to you is that. Yeah, we have to create institutions to take up that gap. We try to, it's not a lack of try. Okay, it's not that we have identified this as a problem in the years. We've created agricultural development banks. We have created venture capital entities. You did it, haven't we? We, we, we have been tried. Um, but somehow we haven't got it to work well. And so the things that, are, that we've created to fill the gaps um, haven't been able to achieve the result that we want. Okay, so the, and, and the first panel, one of the senior bankers, I think from or a bank of the first career, made very clear, it says we are not in the business of uh, 
providing funding for startup firms, for, for risky ventures, and so on. We do business to make money, right? And they make money off of loans, big investments, foreign exchange spread, and basically they do really well. Right? They do, they're making up handsome returns. So there's no need for them to target more risky ventures because there's no incentive to it. Right? So, so financing, but financing is only one of the, the weak elements in the chain. The other key weak element is um, trade facilitation, so facilitate uh, what's called market penetration. So even when we have firms that have stuff that can be sold to people all around the world, it's how you get them into the marketplace. Uh, and it's not just about negotiating an agreement with Canadians or the Europeans. Uh, that then gives you market access in theory. How you convert that into market presence and market penetration becomes the real trick. And we have a lot more investment that's required. Uh, and so we have some significant gaps, and these are not new. You know, my colleague, um, Debbie, has been working on these issues for, I don't know, 20 years, Debbie. <laughs> 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 All right? So, we, we know this stuff. I mean, we've been writing about this stuff for a very, very long time. Um, problem two is that um, nobody is ready. And, and when we do get some funding, so for example, just finished writing our need to trade people, people, right? it's kind of literature, and so on. When, when the donor institutions have tried to fill the gap, uh, it's really a donor driven model. So, so, so for example, we will back up something that called Epic. Capacity. 
is identifying and picking up winners. So, uh, for example, I'm chairman of a company that is distributing film and audiovisual content. We run an incubator. We run an incubator in Toronto at the Toronto International Film Festival. This will be all fifth year. Top, top young filmmakers in the Caribbean are all now on Troy incubator. We run incubators in Toronto. We run them. We've done in Barbados, we've done in New York, we've done in other locations. And the, what was interesting when we ran last one in Barbados is people from the um, film journal in, um, in Germany participated. They said, we're going to have a private film. Why are you doing this? Promoting the development of filmmakers. And we said, well, if we want to have a catalog of films to distribute, then we need to have the makers who have filmed the distribution. Right. Um, so we saw it as self-interested. They, they didn't understand how a private firm could be doing development. And that's because there are no institutions that are doing development that are doing this. And so we've been forced to invest in this development with very little support from the developmental institutions in the region and elsewhere who are targeting in target the sector. Right. So the we scrape up money from all kinds of places um, to make it happen. But we win it. I would say to you we make it fairly successful relative to any of us. So now we have over 300 films in our catalog. No Africa channels are just us because you can do um, they can do a week of Caribbean content. Can't go on it. When you have enough quality films in the world to provide Africa channel with one week of program. That's still very good. Um we soon film to the South African broadcast channel. Um, and we have South America um, and a few other locations. But that's what is required. We cannot, um, and what we've been doing is promoting one filmmaker by one filmmaker by one filmmaker. That's not going to get you anywhere. I've been to the trade, and you do, did the same thing with the music industry. Right? So we keep supporting one artist, one filmmaker. You're not getting in critical mass because when people are interested in us, it's like a Walmart, like Walmart or um, K-Man. Uh, came to people who make steel pans uh, say, okay, we love these steel pans. Can we get 20,000 units per month? We make a thousand a year. Um, you have to have skill. And when you have small territories, and uh, at an archipelago, you have, you have the inherent challenge of scale. And so clustering is really important. So that's why the cluster initiative that the Compute Caribbean is pursuing, things are really important. We need scale up. We need to do 10 times as much work in terms of clustering. Um, what the Caribbean Center for Competitiveness has been doing on clustering, again, we need to scale that up but more significantly. Uh, we really don't have a choice of, of, and this is where the innovation resides. For us, the innovation resides in providing the services related to doing this joint. So that's why I like this diagram from my, uh, my friend and collaborator, um, Junior, from the clinic. And he says, we need tools for trade, we need tools for creation, and we need tools for construction. But more importantly, we need to democratize the information. We need to democratize our institutions. Level playing field. Um, get rid of the silos, create the networks, etc., etc. Um, and this is where um, innovation is not about science and technology in classic sense. It's more about creating a set of 
creating new synergies where, um, where it wouldn't happen ordinarily. Like if we were left to our individual devices, it wouldn't happen. And so the, the, the biggest source of innovation, the biggest potential for innovation in the Caribbean is in about this networking process and facilitating clusters, and facilitating, um, you know, and this is particularly in new economic activities. Uh, maybe some more numbers as well. Uh, so, and the new technologies facilitate this process. So, 10 years ago, it would have been far more difficult, but now with the new ICT technologies, new internet technologies, all the social networking, etc., etc., it's become so much easier. So, we should be generating virtual communities that are collaborating achieve uh, multiple results in multiple markets. So I, I, I want to end on that note.